Hello, everyone. Once again, sincere thanks for again your time. Today, I'm going to continue on our discussion on anger modulation. For this video, I'm going to discuss the effect of EM, okay, which is the amplitude of the modulating signal, and FM, which is the frequency of the modulating signal on a FM modulated signal. So this is our objective. Today, I will discuss how does the amplitude and the frequency of the modulating signal actually will affect on the modulated signal. I'm also going to discuss what is the difference between peak frequency deviation and rate of frequency swing. Okay, so this is also our objective for this video. This will be the part three series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please study the video if you're keen to know more about frequency modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Again, sincere thanks for your strong support. This is what I have discussed on the part one series on the frequency modulation. Before I continue, I'd like to re-emphasize the key concept of frequency modulation. In a FM modulator, the change in frequency is proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal. Okay, so in this diagram here, you can see that this sine wave is the modulating signal. This is the signal again that we want to send to the recipient. This is what we call the modulated signal, which means that this signal actually beside the carrier, they also carry the information, which is the modulating signal. And on the previous video on the part one series, okay, I have described that when the modulating signal is at the lowest in terms of amplitude, you can see over here, it has the lowest frequency. And from here, you can see that this is the frequency diagram here. You can see that when the amplitude of the modulating signal is at the lowest, you can see that it actually has the lowest frequency. And when the amplitude of the modulating signal is at the highest, okay, again from here, if you trace back here, you can see that the frequency is actually the highest. And again, from this diagram here, you can see that they basically occupy the space that is on the extreme right, which has the highest frequency component. So imagine over here, how can I actually indicate the information to you by in term of frequency? So imagine when we actually reach this point here, I actually show you a very low frequency and you actually know that this is at the lowest amplitude of the modulating signal. Later on, you can imagine the arrow actually shift to the right until they reach this point here, which means that this is the point that they actually shift until this yellow point here. You can see that the arrow actually indicate that the frequency actually increase, which means that the amplitude of the modulating signal also increase until they reach at the point of the origin here. And after that, the modulating signal amplitude actually continue to increase. And again, you can imagine that the arrow actually also shifting to the right until they reach the maximum level of the amplitude of the modulating signal. So with this, you have some idea. So this is also like what I mentioned earlier on. The FM modulator is basically the change in frequency is actually proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal. So from here, you can see that to indicate the position of the modulating signal, I actually use my frequency to indicate it. Okay, when the amplitude is at the lowest point, I actually show a very low frequency to you. So you know that this is actually at the lowest point of the modulating signal. And when the amplitude of the modulating signal is at the highest level, I actually show the higher possible frequency to indicate that this is actually the highest amplitude in the modulating signal. So this gives you some idea how we actually implement the frequency modulation. And again, if you have some doubt, please refer to my part one series discussion in order to fully understand on this frequency modulation. The peak frequency deviation 
change in F. Okay, so this is the maximum frequency deviation. Denote the maximum change of the instantaneous carrier frequency from its unmodulated carrier frequency value. So right in the middle is basically we call the unmodulated carrier frequency, which means that they don't carry any information. So this is the frequency of the carrier. So this is what we call the peak frequency deviation. So this is the maximum change beside plus, and we also have the maximum change in terms of minus, okay, to indicate the position of the amplitude of the modulating signal. The instantaneous carrier frequency will swim from one extreme end, okay, so this is one of the extreme end, to the other extreme end, okay, so you can see from here, they basically will swim quite quickly. Okay, so this is what this line means. The amplitude of the modulating signal EM, okay, they basically determines how far the instantaneous carrier frequency can swim from its unmodulated carrier frequency of FC. Okay, so the amplitude of this modulating signal actually changes the frequency deviation, which I will illustrate later on. So this is what this line means. The frequency of the modulating signal FM will determine how fast the instantaneous carrier frequency swim from one extreme end to the other extreme end. This means that the frequency of the modulating signal actually depends how fast this swing from one end to the other end, and then from this end swing back to the other end. So basically, this is what you mean. The frequency of the modulating signal control the speed, how they actually indicate the frequency, while the amplitude of the modulating signal depends how far away they can be. Okay, I'm going to explain this in more detail on the next few slides. Let's start by discuss on the peak frequency deviation. Okay, so this is what we call the typical scenario. Okay, so this is basically what happens is when we actually double the amplitude of the modulating signal. Can you see over here? So when we actually double the amplitude of the modulating signal, instead of this range, okay, the range actually double. Can you imagine this? When I actually double the amplitude of the modulating signal, the peak frequency deviation also double. So this is what I, wa I want to say. When we actually increase the peak of the modulating signal, we actually also increase the peak frequency deviation. And you can see from this diagram here, the, the range so-called become further away or double. Okay, so let's read the explanation here. Okay, if the amplitude of the modulating signal EM doubles, the peak frequency deviation change in F will also double. The amplitude of the modulating signal determine how far the instantaneous carrier frequency can swim from its unmodulated carrier frequency of FC. So this is what you mean. When I actually increase the amplitude, this actually throw this further away. Can you imagine? So earlier on probably will be just this space. Okay, so when I actually double the amplitude of the modulating signal, it actually double the peak frequency deviation. So this is what it means. So basically the peak frequency deviation is controlled by the amplitude of the modulating signal. Next, rate of frequency swing. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram. Again, this is what we call the default. Okay, so this is what we call the changes. You, if you look, hard enough, you can see that the frequency of the modulating signal actually double, okay, which means that I actually increase the frequency of the modulating signal by two times. So you can see that basically the frequency are much, much closer. Okay, If the frequency of the modulating signal FM double, the rate of the change of the carrier frequency will also double. The frequency of the modulating signal will determine how fast the instantaneous carrier frequency swim from one extreme end to the other extreme end. So this is again what I have mentioned earlier on. So imagine, okay, on the frequency swing, you can see that basically the changes okay, will be much, much faster as I mentioned on this paragraph here. Let's do a very quick conclusion based on the study of this year. So this is what we call under the normal situation. So you can see from here, this is the carrier. This is the modulating signal. This is what we call the modulated frequency modulated signal. So in the first case here, you can see that the amplitude of the modulating signal actually double. So you can see from here, the difference in terms of frequency actually double. Can you see here? 
So you can see here to here, okay, and the frequency, the difference in the frequency actually double when I actually increase the amplitude of the modulating signal. Next, when the frequency of the modulating signal increase, okay, you can see that the, the changes from high low, high low also become closer apart. Can you see here, this is basically high, low, high, low. With the same time, you can see that this is high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. So from here, you can see that this actually affects the rate of the frequency swing. Okay, which means that the changes from one status to another status actually increase. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much.